Hello, I'm Emma Hammett from First Aid for Life and OnlineFirstAid.com. Today I'm going to talk to you about skiing. Skiing and snowboarding are fabulous fun. I love them. I love doing it, not very good at it, um, but it is dangerous. It is this time of year that you frequently start seeing people hobbling around on crutches, having had a really great skiing um, um, skiing trip, which has sadly ended in a disaster. So key things, as you all know, are get fit before you go skiing and get the correct equipment. Um, borrowing ski equipment from friends can increase your risk of a ski accident by up to 800%. That's huge. So um, just make sure that you are wearing the correct stuff and that you are um, using the correct stuff. So key things that I'm sure you all know, if you're layering clothes, which you should do when you're skiing, um, layer natural fabrics with natural fabrics or synthetic fabrics with synthetic, synthetic fabrics. Don't layer a, a synthetic and a natural fabric because they work differently the way they wick and you will end up getting colder. Make sure you've got really good quality gloves. Um, there is nothing worse than getting cold hands when you are, are skiing and that horrible feeling when your fingers go completely numb. Likewise with your socks, the advice is to wear one pair of really good quality, well-fitting socks, um, one pair every day, obviously, um, and not layers of socks, because there used to be advice about wearing silk socks underneath. And um, the advice at the moment is that actually that can cause more friction and can cause blisters and be more uncomfortable. Um, and it can actually um, make your feet colder. Uh, the other thing with your cold feet is make sure your boots aren't done up too tightly. Never be tempted to fib about your weight or your height or your ability when you are getting your skis um, and getting your bindings adjusted because it is critical that they get all these things right. If your bindings are too tight, you will be far more prone to injury. If your bindings are too loose, you are more prone to injury. So make sure that you give them the correct information so that they can adjust your bindings appropriately. And the ski shops are usually really good, even if you haven't got your equipment from there, they're usually very helpful at just making sure that you are safe and just checking the fitting of them. So if you're not sure, get it checked out. Right, fatalities. Sadly, fatalities do occur when skiing, um, and the highest age group is late teens to late 30s, and that's about 70% of fatalities, and 85% uh, of them are male. So there is a little bit of the testosterone side of things going down the slopes. Ski within your ability, and don't forget that other people may not be skiing within their ability, so make sure you're not put at risk. Wearing a ski helmet reduces your risk of a head injury by as much as 29 to 56%. So get a good quality um, ski helmet that fits. Um, and always ensure everything fits properly and is fit for purpose. So if something happens and you are first on scene at a, um, a ski accident, uh, you'd go through the normal danger response, airway breathing, um, and circulation. So danger, be aware of your surroundings. Don't put yourself at risk. Um, other skiers will not know that you may be over the ridge um, with you know, looking after someone. So make sure there's somebody on the slopes at the top to alert them. Um, you can do cross ski poles or a snowboard planted to alert them or get someone to stand at the top and shout. Um, Check it safe before you cross over to help them. And also, shout over, do they need your help? You know, don't assume because someone is lying there that um, they do desperately need you. They might have stopped for some reason. So if they are conscious and there's no obvious signs of an accident, shout over before you put yourself at risk. Um, make sure that uh, um, you, you have the emergency numbers that you need. They are at the ski lifts. They are around, they should be on the pieced map. So make sure that you have those and you have them in your phone ready to call should you need to. And make sure your phone's charged up too. The cold can drain the battery quite quickly, so have a backup battery with you. 
Um, so in terms of response, are they conscious? So if they are conscious, find out if they need you, find out if there's anything you can do to help from a distance to get someone over there, or if they need you to get over, in which case, if it's within your ability to do so, get over there, otherwise alert a better skier to go over and help. Certainly if it's very icy, it may not be me that is the best person to get over there. Um, as I say, I'm, I like skiing, but if it's icy, I'm not the safest on there. Um, so if, they are uncon um, if they're unconscious, open the airway, tilt the head, lift the chin, check for any obvious obstruction and check for breathing. Look, listen and feel for at least, um, at least two breaths in up to 10 seconds. If they are breathing and they are unconscious, get someone else if possible to help you log roll them into the recovery position. Not always easy on the slopes. Do your best. And the key thing you're trying to do is protect their airway whilst not twisting their spine. If they're unconscious and not breathing, it'll be CPR. If they are conscious and you've excluded um, life-threatening injuries, your next thing is to look at the circulation, cover any, blue, uh, any wounds and uh, apply direct pressure to stop them bleeding. If they are very cold, hypothermia actually affects the ability of your blood to clot. So do what you can to keep them warm, to conserve their, their body heat. Um, it's always a good idea to travel with a, um, a foil blanket. They're light, you can fit them in your pocket and they have a multi multitude of, of uses. Um, don't reposition limbs that could be broken unless you're miles in the middle of nowhere and there's obvious sign that there is complete lack of sensation or the extremity is turning a different color, in which case repositioning them carefully to a neutral position might um, alleviate any pressure and restore the circulation. But if there is help coming, professional help coming imminently, then don't be tempted to do that. Um, keep them as still as they, they are happy being. So don't restrain them, but don't move them unnecessarily. Um, keep them warm and dry. Don't give them anything to eat or drink. Um, if they have got dehydrated and you are concerned that's a worry, then very small sips of water. But um, eating and drinking, if they may need an operation, it could delay them being able to be operated on. Um, and uh, alert the rescue services. Um, so. Um, call them, they'll need to know exactly where it is. And you've got pieced um, name and the nearest pieced marker. So keep an eye open for those and that's really good to pinpoint um, where the accident has occurred. Um, and give them all the information you can, the number of people injured, the type of injury, are they conscious, unconscious. And the other thing is, it's an accident. Your insurance company will want to be um, informed too. So if there are extra people, then if they can get names and addresses of the people involved, any witnesses, the place, the time. Um, this is obviously after any life-threatening first aid has been handled, but it is helpful to have. Um, common injuries, um, concussion. Keep an eye open for anything unusual for at least 48 hours. Dislocated shoulders, fractured collarbones, skiers, thumbs. They're, they're common injuries too, um, as is um, um, your old... Um, crucial ligament when your knee goes. Um, they're all common injuries and we've covered that in a specific blog. So I hope that's been helpful. Enjoy your skiing holiday, prepare well, warm up because it's an um, exercise and remember to cool down and do stretches once you've finished because that will make a difference as to how ready you are the following day. Six hours is a long time on the slopes and that's the average of what people do. And that last hour when you're tired is, is known as the insurance hour. So be aware if you are getting overtired, come in early and uh, we'll sit on the slopes and have a, a nice hot chocolate or a glue vine. So um, without too many glue vines. So I hope that's helpful. That's Emma Hammett from First Aid for Life and onlinefirstaid.com. <laughs>